Welcome to another episode. In this episode I'm going to build this corner built in with some storage under the seating. It starts with some reference. The client sends me some pictures and I come up with a drawing with an idea and then I have to engineer it. I have to engineer the separate parts exactly what is going to be built when and how. And here you see the, the basic shapes. It helps me understand exactly what I need to do. And so I'm going to start with the profile of one of the seats. And it's going to be the same profile. Kind of imagine it like extruded like you would use in a, in a CAD program. So I'm going to make the side and then extrude it. And considering there is a left and a right seat or the front and back side of the corner, I'm going to have two seats and each seat is going to have an end. So that's four ends. That's kind of how I break it down to understand it and so it's going to have sort of a cantilevered spot there it's like a big large toe kick so to speak and I use the table saw there to make all my straight cuts up to the corner and I hand cut it with a pull saw and so there now I have my four ends so each end of both of the seats and now I'm extruding those ends so to speak and I'm making the the broad side and the short side and each end of the seating area is going to have a hardwood corner and so here you see me ins inserting a piece of oak and so this is going to be on one of the broad sides and then I will use the domino jointer to, to add it to the opposite side so two sides of the corner and now I have to consider that the whole area where this is being installed has a shoe molding at the ground and this is why I keep cutting this profile into everything I got remember that when I go to install this I'm going to have the shoe molding everywhere I'm not going to cut it out I'm going to leave it in place so I just have to accommodate my build to wrap over it and now here you see me attaching one of the ends so I'm going to have that hardwood corner and there you can begin to see the one side of the seated area and now that's the other end of the seated area that's going to go against the wall that, that area there at the top of the picture is the corner. It's a little complicated. It all starts to come into play. So some of it's going to be buried in the corner, and that's where I'm not so worried about the hardwood. Hardwood faces out each edge. And now here I'm using a Craig jig. And it's the easiest method. So a combination of domino joints and Craig jig. And I have a, a lot of area that's going to be hidden from view, so I have an opportunity to use the Craig jig. Some of the area is going to be accessible for storage, so when I put all these screws in place, I do cover them back up. And here I'm just using straight screws just for that lap joint. And I'm using plastic wood to fill in those screw holes. And there you see all those Craig jig holes. I use ready patch in some cases when there's big spots to fill. There really is no reason why I use one over the other. The ready patch just seems to be cheaper because it's a little bit more plentiful. And I'm just using my corner clamps to hold that in place while I'm about to screw it. That whole area is going to be against the wall so there's no reason to put a big broad side on it. And there you can see everything taking shape. This is going to be the middle of the seating area, and I'm going to have it two hatches, so that's just some more support. And when I say two hatches, they're going to be the access doors to get inside the seat. I started developing a plan of exactly how I wanted to do the doors as I was building. And here you see this is going to be the beginning of the back of the shelving unit. There's a lot of engineering that goes on. i got to remember how things are going to come apart and then go back together. And so as I build them side by side, I'm remembering how I'm going to take them apart. So I have those two pieces side to side, and then I have those sort of overlap joints at the bottom corners. Again, I have to remember that shoe molding that's in the, in the house. And so what I'm doing now, this is the other side of the, the extrusion, as I call it, because it's kind of reminds me of SketchUp. So there, that's the side that gets extruded at a 90 degree angle. And there you can see the beginning. And again, I have to make sure this all comes apart on my bench to go back together at the location. 
And now I'm measuring out of the corner, and I gotta make the piece that's not there, minus all the information I already actually built. And so here I'm using my Veritas miter plane just to get a nice clean flat surface there. I love this plane, it's nice and hefty. And I can make nice 90 degree cuts, which you'll see in a minute. And so I'm putting on the other end, the opposite end of the one I just made into a zigzag. It's difficult to explain exactly what I'm doing. Obviously you're going to be able to watch it, but to put it into words is a little difficult. And so now I'm ready to make my 90 degree. And I move my existing part all the way to the back bench. And I don't have enough bench, so I gotta hang it in midair, so I gotta put a leg on it. That's temporary. And there, you could begin to see what I'm talking about there. For the Craig jigs, I like to let the glue dry for a few minutes, which I did off camera, and then I put the screws in. So I always tack it with glue, let it sit for a few minutes, and then I put the screws in. Because if you go straight away, everybody that uses a Craig jig knows the screws will cause the two surfaces to shift. So I glue them together like that, let it dry for about 10 minutes, and then I go in and then I add my screws. I'm adding that back rib which gives me something to screw against the wall at the location and then it just makes the whole box secure while I move it around. And then the center is going to separate the two access hatches and then just give the sheet some support. And you see I've made it, I waited some time for the glue to dry there and now I'm putting all my, my Craig screws in. And now I want to make sure the two parts separate so they don't accidentally get glued together on the bench and there they separate now. So you can see how I got there. And now I'm working in my upstate shop for a couple days and so I make the the very back that's going to have three separate shelves. Craig jig, I have a little Craig jig upstate, it's kind of a mobile one and I use to clamp it in place one at a time. I'm using lots of glue on this obviously because I want the strength of it but I also don't need to worry too much about the glue because the whole entire thing is going to get painted. It's going to get primered and painted and primered and painted so I have a lot of opportunity to cover up. If I was working with a hardwood veneered plywood I'd have to be super cautious and wash the glue off of everything. Here not so much, I just wash it off just so I don't have a bump, but I'm not worried about it being in the grain because it's all going to get painted white. And I'm using poplar and plywood. And this is the first you see some plop poplar framing. I'm also going to use it quite a bit on the seating area. And I'm just putting a face frame, I'm building the face frame in place. And I'm using predominantly glue and then later on I'll go in and add some screws. And again, I'm just covering up my... I like the ready patch to fill the holes because it's kind of cheap and it's not necessarily like a water-based. It seems to have some sort of a, like an acetone base so it dries quicker. And usually two coats will fill in a hole. And the whole thing is getting painted again, so everything's going to get covered completely. And here's Wanse. He's painting it give it a coat of primer and then a couple of coats of our finished color which is a, a white it's sand between coats and as I built the parts we painted them so you'll notice the parts sometimes turn white in the movie and then they're back in place but that's just to start building up coats and here I begin the frame that's going to be one of the seats I need three frames for the top of both seats and then the back of the one seat one seat's going to have storage behind it, the other one's just going to have a, a back to lean on. And I have all my pocket holes in place, but I glue it all together, let it cure for about 10 or 15 minutes, and then I flip it over, and then I put my pocket screws in. It's real important, because otherwise you're going to be shifting things around. It's very frustrating. And then I'm using my miter plane to clean up the ends. I had to add a little bit of plywood to some to give it some girth where it's going to be hidden from the back and uh, it's kind of hard to describe until you see what I'm talking about and uh, the hatch on each seat is going to have to 
live against an edge and there you see me using plywood to build up an edge I'm making the rabbit area there instead of having cut it into the wood because it's just ha overall more heftier with the thin material and again there's my miter plane instead of having a joiner to get rid of some of the saw marks I'm just using that hefty miter plane getting nice long shavings the whole length I'm impressed with that plane I really like it and now I need to make my five degree back and I made this jig specifically just to cut my five degree back parts and uh, having those toggles to clip the piece of wood in places is really great and also very safe so if you've never used them you should pick them up from a rockler or whoever has them and use them when you can for temporary jigs they're really safe to have and so now you can kinda see my vision a little bit in my original drawing I drew the back part where I'm standing under and this angled back in two pieces as I began to build it I realized it should have been one and so I connect them right now I'm building them integrated into one another and again I have to remember this whole thing has to come apart and so that edge where the glue bottle is sitting sort of wraps the back edge of the seat and there's my face frame for the seat I had three face frames to make and I didn't want to make the video too long by showing the process they're all basically the same and I wanted to have hardwood edges facing out everywhere so that's why I put that little cap at the top of this face frame wraps the plywood and again I'm just adding some Craig jig holes pocket holes where I know I'm going to be able to, to get the screw gun in there and I'm just prepping my face frame and tip it up glue it into place this was a big glue up and I dry fit it a couple times to make sure everything was covered and then I let the glue dry for about 10 minutes and then I start to put in some of the pocket holes and there you can see how I have the frame going directly into the seat I did a, I was able to do a lot of this because it's all getting painted usually a couple of coats of that filler and I'm good and then now this is the shallow back on the opposite side there is no storage behind it so it's just a five degree bevel against the wall so when you sit you have something to put your back against and just like building a little wall I build my my uprights and my studs and now I'm gluing it onto the backing and since it's a difficult thing to to clamp I'm just using some steel weights a whole bunch of them and now again my hardwood is going right at the cap so I got nice hardwood everywhere in the event it gets dinged or if it starts to get worn out the hardwood's going to show not end of plywood which we don't want to see and you can see pretty much wherever there is an open edge is going to be hardwood and I'm pulling apart my piece because I want to make sure it's not glued together and I have to start to process each piece on its own get some nice fine finishing on there you see that miter plane I'm able to pull off a one and a half inch wide strip sanding it in with my long board long boards like one of the most important things whenever you do anything like this and there I'm getting those joints all nice and smooth working them into one another that long board it's just a, an old school sanding board with 80 grit sometimes 100 grit there's some interior storage in that little area there which you'll see in a minute and now I'm making my doors and these are the doors that are going to go over each one of the hatch ports you notice me cut the long piece of plywood then I flipped it and then I cut off about a quarter of an inch that quarter inch is the piece that got dragged around the room so if I have to make a 14 inch wide piece I cut it 14 and a quarter flip it and cut that quarter off and then I have two clean cuts on both sides so there I'm just processing the the doors getting paint built up and before I do my final paint I have to cut the pockets for each one of these finger pulls and you see the process by which I'm able to keep them nice and square. The majority of it is that drilled hole. And then I use an X-Acto knife to cut through the veneers because I'm using Baltic birch 11 layer plywood to be used for the doors. And I make a couple of these and that's how I get educated. The rest of them go a lot easier. 
and I'm using my ice pick just to start the screw holes. These screws were brass. I broke two of them in the very first attempt, so I had to actually drill the holes for them. The ice pick wasn't enough. They were nickel plated brass screws and I found out the hard way. And then this is the piano hinge and I get all my piano hinges in place which takes some time. Stretch wrap ready to go. There's all my pieces. I had five pieces after all the engineering was said and done. So there's my truck loaded up ready to go to the location. We're at the location. One by one, Willie and I are bringing all the pieces in. And at the location in the apartment, and right there I realized I made my sizes correct. Sort of a hold your breath moment when you put all these pieces right into where they're going to go and you want to make sure you didn't make it one inch bigger. I always try to make it one inch smaller, but sometimes because I'm dyslexic I make it wider. Or a lot of times 45 becomes 54 or vice versa. And 69 becomes 96 a lot for me. And here we're just making sure all the pieces fit together. And you can see that nice snug fit. And I get to put everything snug together. And I didn't cut any of that shoe molding there. You can see I start to fit everything right around the shoe molding on the existing area. In the event they want to change stuff, they could just pull this right out. And I knew I had outlets on the wall. I didn't know exactly where they were going to land. And of course they landed directly on this edge. So you see the outlets on the wall. I'm using my little end cutter there, which is a lifesaver on any installation. Most guys would know that. And I'm actually moving all the outlets to that power strip which you could see there in place but it's on the outside up under the the ledge screwing all my parts together for the final plugging it in pulling it in and now we're all fit together tight and that was another hold your breath moment to make sure I didn't make that too big and that top strip well look at how happy I am that top strip comes off to access that vent panel at the ceiling and now for the final touch up. Wherever the seams are coming together get flooded with paint so it looks like one solid piece. And we spent some time caulking it into the area making sure everything looks like it was integrated and built in the spot. And there it is. There's the finish. And this was about three days worth of work and about a uh, one hour install. Most of the work was on those outlets. And there it is. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And thank you for watching and supporting my videos.